Okay, so today I wanted to go over my top five favorite mods that I've done to my 240SX and each mod being under $500. So I currently own an S13 hatch, but I have owned an S14 Kuki in the past as well. So everything that I list will be a mod that I have experienced on one of my own personal cars and have installed and gone through myself. So the first thing I'll go with is the ISR short shifter. I specifically have the version 2 and I believe when I got it, it was right around $100. On my S13, that is currently what I'm running with my SR20 transmission. But on my S14 Kuki, I did have the BNM version 1, which did rattle. Uh, not, neither of them leaked, and my ISR version 2 does not rattle at all. Like in, at any RPM range, I've had no rattling issues. Um, as far as like how they feel, it reduces the throw a ton over stock. I don't remember the exact number, but it's definitely less than half. Um, like the actual distance of the throw is less than half of a stock shifter and it's just a lot tighter overall. It did come with a new OEM style plastic bushing, uh, which definitely tightened up the feel as well. Overall, I would recommend it because I, I think it does help with faster shifts. You just have to be cautious to not shift it too fast. Like you have to, you just have to adjust to it, um, not push the clutch in and not release the clutch too fast so you don't damage your synchros. Then moving on to number two, I would go uh, with the steering wheel. So my stock S13, or both my 240s actually came with a stock steering wheel. Um, my S13 steering wheel was falling apart, like literally cracking and the material of the actual wheel was disintegrating in your hand at each time you grabbed it. So I did swap over to an NRG wheel. It is, a th I think, a 350 millimeter diameter and it is deep dish, so it does kind of protrude towards the driver a little bit. As far as mounting it, I'm using a P2M hub from Njuku and then I have an NRG quick release version 2, I want to say. If you are going to do this to your S chassis, I would recommend not getting um, a deep dish wheel just because I feel in my opinion the steering wheel is now a little bit too close for my preference So I think with a flat steering wheel with a quick release with a short hub uh, That'll put the steering wheel in more of a proper position and a lot more comfortable Especially for track or autocross or even daily driving and like the ship like the shifter It doesn't necessarily improve performance, but again, this is something that you're touching constantly while you're driving and it can just overall change and improve the total driving experience of the car. Uh, everyone knows the 240 has great steering feel and great steering input, so just enhancing that experience a little bit more is worth it in my opinion. And that's why it's one of my favorite mods that I've done, especially under $500. Like the wheel itself from NRG is 100 plus a $100 quick release, plus like a $60 hub. So it's definitely well under $300. Usually, sometimes it can be over $300 depending on what wheel you get. Um, like if you're running a Sparco or a Momo, that can definitely up the price closer to $500. But overall, it's just, the total should still run you under $500. Number three on the list, I'll go with my Sparco Sprint, continuing the theme of interior improvements. I am not a fan at all of the stock S13 seats. In fact, I know a lot of guys will swap in S14 seats or S15 seats. Uh, I've heard, I've like, I've had people DM me on Instagram when I first got my car that I should replace my seats because they've literally had them buckle in an accident because they're, again, they're approaching 30 years old, if not already 30 years old. So they're, they're not the most reliable and also they're not that comfortable. They're definitely not supportive. Like one of, it, probably the worst support out of any seat I've ever sat in and Miata seats are already not that supportive, like stock NB or NA seats. NB1 seats at least from a Miata. But the S13 seats are even worse than that as far as support goes. So putting in a seat like the Sprint, which is like $375, uh, is a really big, not only safety, but comfort. And just, and again, it just enhances the overall driving experience. I know a lot of people are hesitant to put in like a race seat or a bucket seat, but in my experience, the Sparco Sprint is very comfortable. It kind of like forces you to sit more upright, which I think is better for your posture. And it's just the way it hugs your shoulders and your hips, I just prefer. And I have no problem sitting in that car for a three hour drive. I think that's the longest I've ever driven in it. Uh, but again, without issue. I know one of my best friends with his Miata, he daily drives his Sparco Sprint and he drives to and from Los Angeles and Arizona where he goes to school, again, without issue. Um, well, maybe a little numbness by the end, but that would happen with any seat, of course. Also, they're lighter than the stock seat. I don't know the exact weight differences, uh, but they also do look better as well. Uh, specifically with the Sparco Sprint uh, that I have both passenger and driver on my car. Um, the, on the driver's side, I'm running the Sparco rails or low rails with a slider, actually. So my driver's seat is adjustable, uh, but my passenger seat is just set to one spot with using a street faction rail 
uh, super nice. Both rails are super nice quality, no fitment issues at all. Um, and yeah, even the without the sliders, they're very adjustable, even height adjustable and angle adjustable. So I'd recommend either the Sparco or the Tree Faction. I've had no issues with either, no complaints with either one. Number four on my list is something I haven't really noticed too much attention to, but it's actually an aluminum drive shaft from Shaft Masters. <laughs> At the time that I got it, I believe it was $369.99, including shipping. Like they have free 48 state continental US shipping. Uh, I did go with the aluminum. They do offer a steel uh, drive shaft at a lower price. It is a one piece drive shaft, so just keep that in mind. It is a little bit more difficult to pull in and out of the car if you drop your transmission for whatever reason often. Um, just because there's no play, of course, and it does delete the OEM carrier bearing in the middle. So if your drive shaft is going out, I would just recommend going with the one piece. They're stronger, uh, they look better, and they're much lighter. Uh, so I, I installed this when I first got my 240, probably like two years ago, maybe a little less, like a year and X months ago. Um, but again, it doesn't crazy, do a crazy improvement in your performance or your wheel horsepower or whatever. But again, it just changes the, the feel of the car for the good. Because of the reduced weight, shifting all over the rev range is a lot easier. It feels a lot nicer and it's definitely a lot smoother. You will feel, especially in first and second gear, from a standstill when you launch the car, the car does feel noticeably faster, especially it just, it's more rev happy, of course. Um, but as you get through higher through the gears, the effect of the light and drive shaft does tend to kind of taper off. But just from how easy it is to now sh downshift and upshift, I think it's a very worthwhile upgrade that is often overlooked. I know a lot of guys still run stock drive shaft, um, and it's, it's not that expensive where I think it's definitely worth the price you pay for the upgrade and feel and the slight upgrade in wheel horsepower as well. Then finally on my list, I will say the Z32 front calipers off of a 300ZX, a turbo model for the aluminum calipers, is a really good upgrade for your S chassis. So you do need the Z32 calipers, Z32 pads, Z32 rotors, and then some stainless conversion line. Uh, personally, I'm running 300 uh, ZX turbo. I think if I put 1992, 300ZX turbo, uh, caliper is a 30 millimeter aluminum with a 1992 300ZX rotors and pads. I'm running Soptec sport pads and then I'm running ISR conversion braided steel, stainless steel lines in the front. On my car I do have stock rear calipers. Um, but for the front it's a huge improvement over stock even just driving in the canyons casually. Uh, definitely my stock S13 calipers were they would fade noticeably. I didn't have the nicest pads at the time which definitely did have a part in that, and the brakes fading in the canyons. But putting on the 300ZX has a multitude of improvements, like they're aluminum on each corner, so you're reducing unsprung weight right over your wheel. They also look cooler, uh, they're bigger, they're clean. Usually if you get them remanufactured, they're in like brand new condition, pr pr pretty much. Um, and they're, they just have more surface area to them, so they cool off faster, uh, they provide more stopping power, less fade over time, especially if you're autocrossing or you're tracking or even drifting your car. Um, they're also a direct bolt-on to the front knuckles of the S chassis, which makes the install really easy. A lot, and then it's up to you if you do want to do the Z32 Brakemaster cylinder. I did on my car with stock rear calipers, I wouldn't recommend it. I personally think the pedal is a little too stiff now for my preference, so if I were to do it over again, I would just upgrade the front calipers, but leave the stock S13 uh, Brakemaster cylinder. I, just, I don't think the Z32 is necessary if you're just doing the front. If you're already going to do the Z32 rears, I definitely would recommend the 300ZX BMC then, though. As far as pricing on those calipers, I'm actually going to double check because I don't remember, but I know the stainless conversion lines were $50. Um, pads anywhere from forty to a hundred dollars. Rotors any again anywhere from forty to one hundred and fifty dollars. As far as the calipers, give me one sec. Okay, so I'm actually looking right at Parked Geek right now. So the the caliper price is fifty seven dollars plus a sixty five dollar core price. Uh, your S thirteen stock calipers don't fulfill the core price, so you are gonna have to uh, pay that core price. So that means each caliper will run you a little bit over $120, $122 to be exact, so $244 right there. Uh, the BMC is another $100 plus the brake lines plus your pad and rotor, so it's it's pretty close to $500. Uh, but compared to other options like your Willwood calipers, um, uh, like the the Super Light kit, that's $1,000 plus your stainless lines, which brings it closer to $1,100 all said and done. Uh, they are a little bit bigger, but again, the Z32s are half the price. 
as the Woolwoods for almost just as good performance. I believe the Woolwoods are slightly lighter as well. Um, but the with the 300 ZX calipers, they do offer more economical brake pads if you are just going to be daily driving the car, just like spirited driving, whatever. Uh, if you do go with a Willwood uh, caliper, your pad choice is a little bit more restricted uh, to more performance-oriented options, which can be a little bit more expensive in the long run. So again, those are my top five favorite mods that I've done to the S chassis. Uh, each mod, of course, being under $500. Those are the top five that I would do first. Uh, most of them are really easy to do if you're just getting an S chassis and want to know what your first upgrades can be. Uh, all five of those are really good options to start out with and just to start learning how to wrench on your car. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like the video. I really appreciate it and I will see you guys very soon. Peace out and thank you guys so much for watching.